welcoming bosom of Bowser. Mm. Mm. All right, uh, show time, everyone. Here comes the show, and I will now. Oh, <laughs> press the button. The button. No, with no further ado, here comes the show. I'm sure it's all worked out. Yep, it is. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. German or else is brought to you this evening by Commandant's Knagwurst. Open a can today. Mm. Close as you get to a commercial. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to Play Retro. I'm Scott Johnson, one of your hosts. And I don't know about you, but Mecha Hitler used to keep me up at night. No mm. dictator should have the power to cyborg himself into a position of ultimate power and destruction. So good thing I brought a Gatling gun and chicken dinners. His mustache hitbox is too small. <laughs> and I'm your other host, Brian Dunaway. And I just want to get out of this World War II era Nazi nightmare of a castle maze without having to kill any more German shepherds. Nazis, yes. And more, yes. Let's kill them. But good boys, no. <laughs> now, who wants a wiener schnitzel? I found it in a dead Nazi's pocket. It's still warm. Mm, who's a good boy? You are. Bad Nazi. <laughs> You do kill a lot of dogs in this game. I don't care for that. Well, not if you play the, uh, the, the, the was it the NES one? Did the I old games not have the, dogs, but they do. I don't remember. They, they did giant, the Nintendo said, you can't, you can't have the swastikas. Yeah. You can't have Hitler with a mustache yeah. and you can't be shooting no puppy dogs. So they yep. turned them into giant rats, mm. some general looking uh, just guy in a brown uniform and uh, mm. uh, no swastikas to be seen. Yeah. This is the version I played. On my Ambernick the other day. Oh, now, yeah, now yeah. that you mentioned the, it, because they the had sanitized. all these all these pictures of Hitler on the wall with no mustache. <laughs> uh, the swastikas were crosses or something else, or some kind of weird. Other I, it was plus symbols because I thought the same thing. Because I was like, "Hey, is that supposed to be with cross?" Yeah. Nintendo's not supposed to do any religious type stuff. Was that better than? Well, you know, it was it was things? like the cross was it was not like total Jesus cross. It was more like no, it was like it was plus. like uh, Switzerland's uh, uh, the Swiss Army cross, right? Yeah, it was more like that, and I think that's yeah. how they got away with it. But yeah, those were the, those were those those Nintendo Screw the days. Swiss. Yeah, they were busy. Uh, <laughs> this was this is right around the time that Mortal Kombat got sweat for blood and all that kind of thing. So yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, and there was yeah. no blood in that uh, Nintendo version either. It looked like uh, was it. Like sweat. It was supposed to be just sweat. Shot him, it just shot looked, him to sweat. It just looked like water, so. like big globs of water. It was stupid. Yeah. It, it was, was very, it was very dumb. dumb. They changed that by two, but boy, MK1. Yeah, yeah. I, I think by the time they got to the SNES version, they had said, yeah, I forget. There was one that was later on that d they didn't do it. It well, might have been the Game Boy Advance one. Is that what I'm thinking of? Well, might have been. MK, MK1, that's only Super Nintendo. They never made it to NES. So that Super, must have been that was something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That one had the sweat. And there was no way of turning it off. I think you could turn off the sweat, but you couldn't convert it to blood. The Genesis version of the game had blood, but you could turn it off. <laughs> really, I'm surprised uh, it didn't add more blood. It's like, okay, you got yeah. blood or more blood. What it's do you like? Want? Some more blood, and then, and by the time MK2 rolled around, though, I think Nintendo loosened up and had blood in theirs. Right. We we bleed what Nintendo don't. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. I was playing that the other day, too, because I was thinking about MK1 and this whole reboot they're doing, which is so weird. Um, oh, yeah, kinda, MK1. Cool. I'm so excited to get some gameplay uh, just a, a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, earlier in the week, we saw the, just the, the the exciting trailer going back to the to the original story before the story. Well, they're rewriting uh, it is what they're doing. So they're yeah, basically yeah, yeah, yeah. in the game. Uh, Liu Kang g gains the power. And this is all. This all happened at the end of eleven, so it's not like a big spoiler or anything. But no, no. at the end of eleven, or uh, no, sorry, fourteen. Wait, twelve. What's the last one that they made? <laughs> now you got me. One second. Twelve. Four. Twelve was the last one. Was 12 it? Was the, right. What's now? Now you can make me look. Now I'm getting. Shit. Now I'm getting Final Fantasy and Mortal Kombat. You got too many darn games. If I can't remember, um, there is no Mortal Kombat fourteen, right? When well, that's no. it, fourteen. Yes, fan. No, is that something? No. Hold on. Did they do a 14? <laughs> 11 so was the last one. Thank God, Tizzerite. Tizzerite Dynamite saved us in the chat room. Oh, yeah. I sure 11, was looking. Jeez. Okay. There so, is some Mortal Kombat 14 uh, fan fiction. That's what was confusing <laughs> that's me. That's in I'm somebody's like, what, head. What is this? Yeah, they're super into that. Okay, sorry. Mortal Kombat 11. 
Right. Uh, then, uh, you know, you think you're going to 12, but you're not. Uh, mm-hmm. What you're doing instead is Liu Kang is redesigning the world. He's basically uh, deciding how the world should be to avoid all this conflict. It, it fails right. miserably, of course, but that's what he tries to do. And in his version of the world, we found out just this week at the Game Fest, Summer Game Fest, uh, Sub Zero and Scorpion are brothers in his version. Of, right. the, of the new world, which is not correct uh, based right. on old lore. So they're just uh, they're just having fun with it, man. They're doing like a canon rewrite, but not really. I'm so excited. They're doing it like you know out in the open. They're basically saying, "Hey, Luke Kang's like God now, so he's gonna, yeah, he's gonna tell everybody what they're gonna do or whatever." And you got like a young uh, Raiden in this thing. Uh, they didn't have me in until this eleven. I was interested, and I played uh, at somebody's house. And I was like, oh, this is pretty sweet. Eleven's awesome. But I had no, it's really good. I had no I had no interest in really deep diving. Now, this one, I'm almost tempted to do the pre-order, which is like $109, because you're supposed to get some early uh early access, but we're gonna see how early that access is. If it's at least a month, I'm like, okay, maybe. Maybe. But uh yeah, because yeah, it's sixty nine at, at launch or yeah. pre-order. I don't care about the 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 little extras other than the free time. If they give time. you a bunch of they give you like a season pass and other characters and stuff, that that's worth it, I right. think. But Oh, yeah. I don't know. I hate pre. One hundred nine dollars, Scott. I'm not doing That's that. That's insane. Yeah, I'm not doing that. We would never play. We would never paid that for a a game on our. Yeah, we would have maybe. I no, hell no. I'm not doing it. It's not happening. One hundred nine. Forget no. it. There's no way. No, I it. can't think not of a happening. game where I've ever spent. Well, it's not true. <laughs> I was about to say you better watch it. You're there was a, remember. There, oh yeah. What was the Genesis game that had uh, a taller cartridge? Had extra shit in there. Yeah, that's usually how they get you. The extra uh, shit. What was it though? It was a big, thick, heavy cartridge, and it cost about a hundred bucks. And it was the most expensive. Was it Eternal Champion? Something was something was a hundred bucks, and I paid right, it right, like a dumbass. Jesus, um, was the, the let's see, uh, buh, buh, buh. I don't know. Genesis game. Why are they most... why are they making it so difficult to find this? All right, here we go. Most expensive. Oh, these are just rarest though. I don't want that. I want to yeah, know yeah, what yeah. what what I paid at the time. I can't find it. But there was some game that had an extra tall cartridge and it was heavy because it had extra hardware in it. And I don't remember what it even did. But it basically was a Genesis cartridge that I spent spent a hundred bucks on and everybody wanted it and it was a big deal. <laughs> and now I don't have any memory of it. What a waste of a hundred bucks that must have been. <laughs> You know how yeah, dumb it must how have been because now you can't remember it and you probably you probably dumped it probably did. right you yeah. did took yeah. a big old dump uh all right so here's a quick thing I'm all garlicked up thanks to uh the help oh. of one Brian Dunaway uh oh, you're welcome yeah and I didn't just send you like spaghetti and and garlic no, no. that's you're talking about OS yeah we're talking about an OS right? for my Amberdick uh 30 right. G's XX John Jim Bob dot 20 or whatever the hell it's Ambernick RG it's if you had this 35 x a there you go 35 that's the number we're looking for the magic number uh anyway i love it i really like the garlic os i like all of the options for that i think it's just better it's just better than what comes stock with that yeah. thing and um it's got all the baked in uh retro art stuff if you're familiar with working around in that anyway so you can do a lot of customization and other stuff which is very nice um i cannot stop playing pokemon pinball again once again that thing rears its head and says, "Hey Scott, remember me? Remember, remember the addiction that is me?" And I say, "Oh, hello, old fiendish friend." <laughs> they called Pokemon Pinball from the uh, uh, what was it? Nintendo uh, Game Boy Advance. Yes. I remember your ugly face. Let's play. And then I played that a lot. I also played. I went on a tear a little bit on trying to find Japanese RPGs, JRPGs that I never played on the PlayStation because that was a yes. for a lot of people. The PlayStation PS One was like a high point for for jrpgs and one of them obviously is final fantasy 7 nobody doubts its dominance during that time that was probably the biggest hit but there were a bunch of others and i wasn't really familiar with them because at the time i hated that genre these days i really like it i enjoy it this uh when this stuff was first landing turn-based combat turned me off oh but now i like all things turn-based combat i love it it's my one of my favorite mm-hmm. sort of genres across the board whatever we're playing whether it be something like civ or or this or you know XCOM, whatever i like taking turns i like it oh yeah anyway uh so i've been doing Same. that so last night i was up till i don't know 2 a.m playing uh <laughs> old japanese uh, japanese role-playing games <laughs> 
on the PlayStation One on my gar on my garlicked up RG fifty eight twenty eight twenty two there in bed. It was I was doing something similar. Um, I also played a little Final Fantasy stuff, and I also played a good bit of Game Boy Advance. I'm trying to remember which pinball. It, this format is just fantastic for playing pinball games. This Game Boy Advance type era, but in this more Game Boy Did color. Did we figure shape. out it's the same exact same? It's the same screen ratio. I know that, but is it the same size screen? No, absolutely not. Game Boy was 2.9 inches, including the game. Uh, the Game Boy Advance was 2.9 inches. Yeah. And the uh, this screen, I think, is a four inch screen or something like that. Very close to that. Matter of fact, it's I was going to tell you that's our that's going to be our next thing that me and you work on uh, is getting you the accurate representation because if I think I sent yours uh, at full screen so that you get the full glory of it, but if you uh, set the overlays uh, in this thing, it will represent it at a two point nine inch screen, and all the graphics will be super sharp, mm. uh, which is what I like now. See, it's got, it's oh, got a little see. Game Boy. Yeah. Thing down here where you can kind of it's, it's labeled and it's got mm. like a little ridge almost looks it. like a, it's part of the bezel or whatever yeah yeah exactly so my game boy uh, my I game prefer- boy color and game boy black and whites all look like that they have that uh over exactly yeah yep Pretty oh cool. did you see this too what do you I got printed, I printed oh this, look at that this. little tiny bugger yeah you got Cute. you got the I, I sent you the more comfortable one but i just got this one uh, mine's beefy. this morning look at this chat look at mine mine's all yeah. beefy bro <laughs> yeah now yours is more comfortable but this one's more aesthetically uh, pleasing, including the fact that I printed it with uh, this sweet uh, PLA uh, resin print that I got, spool of stuff I got. This is a an Amiga beige, I believe. So it's supposed to be the same color as the Amiga. Um, it's a Jesse Premium PLA from print printed solid. Is it really called it Amiga really Beige? Good. Is that what they call it? That's yeah, crazy. yeah, they call it the uh, Beige Number Five Hundred. And if you look on the website, it does say uh, the Amiga Five Hundred. I also have printing right now. What I have in my hand though yeah. is this color that printed this handle out, and which is in my printer right now, yeah. uh, is a Commodore Sixty Four <laughs> Beige <laughs> brown. So it looks. I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks I all think right. It looks pretty good. I think it looks yeah. great. Yeah, it looks yeah, awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm freaking I'm in love with this device. I play it all the time. We have if you're if you haven't if you haven't caught up with uh, the core and the play retro show, we've all been uh, the community uh, at large and including uh, the producers. Uh, we we've all got one of these Amber Nick RG uh, 35 double X's and we've been having a blast with them. And I am really enjoying just learning more and more st- stuff about this thing. And we've been communicating back and forth with a lot of listeners on getting their stuff set up it's yeah and brian brian's doing some hackery where uh he can get some juice uh, like basically um boost the cpu right or unlock it well um, actually the one that um was that no i think yeah that was this one that was this one this uh th- this past week there was there's a a new uh project that is allowing you to unlock uh the gpu so it's, it's we're already using the cpu a lot but they're looking at unlocking the gpu so you can play um some more advanced games than beyond ps1 and prior because that's what these things are really good at which is perfect because all the controls has a d-pad four buttons uh and then some shoulder buttons on the back which is almost you know that that includes almost all machines uh ps1 and prior of course the ps1 did eventually start doing the the dual shock and that but that covers all this now the one i'm holding up right now I don't. Did we talk about this this past week? This just is the, the Miu Mini, Miu, Miu Mini, Mini Plus. Yeah. Very. If you if yeah. you glanced at both of them, you might think he just has two of the same thing. But these are different devices. Yeah. Yeah. This one's a little bit smaller. The buttons on back are, on, are supposed to be a little bit better. I, I they, they both have their advantages and disadvantages to me. The big thing is this one has Wi-Fi, and that's the Miu uh, Mini hold, Plus. Hold them up together. I don't see them at the same right. time. There you go. Let me take it. Let me take them out of the. Mm-mm-mm. Forget it. Yeah. So on so the right go. hand side, I've got my Miu Mini Plus. Yeah. That's the one I'm shaking right now. Yeah. And then on the left hand side is the Amber Nick. Yeah. Uh, the the this one, the Miu has the Wi-Fi. The other one has an HDMI out. Yeah. I like local couch co-op. If you want to play people over the air through net play, which I find uh, an inferior experience it's a buggy nightmare is what it is it's yeah buggy and mess. but you know you can update stuff on this one and on the, on the me mini because it's got wi-fi and you can update your roms and you can do the game saves like you're wanting to do uh so that you can put them between different devices i'm not really that interested in that 
Um, but there's a lot of things you can do. Retro achievements. There's different things that may benefit you, but that didn't appeal to me. So mm. I'm still, I'm still favoring when I'm playing with these, I'm still favoring the Amber Nick. I just like it better. Something about it satisfies me in a way that I can't necessarily explain. Still working on it. Well, uh, that's awesome. I'm very excited for the comparisons as we continue forward in our world of emulate this and emulate that. <laughs> emulate this and emulate that. Oh, and I did. Neither <clears throat> one of these has Bluetooth audio, but I did order an adapter. Yeah. And it's just, it has a regular headphone plug on one end and then it goes out to like this dongle piece and you can press the, the button and it's got Bluetooth action. And I was able to air some, uh, pair some Bluetooth headphones to both of these yeah. because the device just does it. The device does it, whether, it, it no matter matter. what it plugs into, it doesn't care. Yeah. 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 And so I've been in that. That's, that's a very good uh, addition. 20 bucks. I yeah. Think. No big both deal. Of these are, I, yeah. I wouldn't, I'm personally, I mean, if, if all you have is Bluetooth, you know, earphones and earbuds and things, yeah, then that, I, that makes perfect sense to do that. For me, it's like, I've got, I got plenty of wired stuff. I don't mind using it yeah. for that. Yeah. yeah. There's totally nothing wrong fun. with it when you, and there is a little delay. Yeah. Um, the ones I have are 5.0, um, Bluetooth 5.0, and there's, you know, just a little bit of delay, but not enough to really cause any problems. Bluetooth 5.0. But I'll tell you yeah. what it doesn't work with. What? AirPod Pro 2. Oh, shit. Everything I order off Amazon that uh, I've, I've ordered like three or four devices, and none of them pair with my AirPods Pro 2. They will do, they will, they will actually, that's, that's a lie. They pair you dirty liar. All right, I'm go a ahead. dirty liar. They yeah. do pair, but all they do is they make like a half of a second worth of audio, and then it just just cuts off. So I'm assuming it's some kind of protection cut off or something. I've got a 5.3 version coming in today. Hmm. I'm assuming everybody else uses all the same chips. So sure, eh, what you gonna do? What are you gonna Q-green, do? Green, all yeah. that stuff. Oh, yeah. Whatever. But uh, man, these things are fun. They are. We'll talk more about them as we. Uh, I played a lot of the games this week. Yeah, on did, my did. Ember Nick. That's oh how yeah, I, played I did too. Um, yeah, but Wolfenstein I played there again. SNES <laughs> game is a real bummer. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I don't think it's very good. And also, they changed the voices and the music and stuff. They changed a lot in that. So yeah. they're not yelling out these cool German things. They're, yeah, that's that's right. That was the other thing on the Nintendo version. You're right. They they used English and they did not. He's like, hey, you over there. The yeah, they basically just made up a fake. And then you know what? The newer ones are kind of like that. Like I want to say. New Colossus or or uh, New or- no New Order whatever the hell it was the 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 the, the modern the most modern of the right, most right, recent right. ones and there's a third one coming soon. Um, those games uh, those games use symbology that aren't I don't think they're swastikas either. I think they're I think that's just we're just done with swastikas. Are we okay with shooting Nazi still? Oh I mean, yeah, me. Is for there going to sure. be a day that we wake up and it's like that's it? No, no we're I, shooting Nazis. No, I, th- Nazis I mean, they're people, too. No, no, no. I think, not- <laughs> I think the reason that they don't put the symbology in there, it's not because they don't want to offend Nazis. I think it's because right, right. it's Nazi imagery. It's like, why exactly. Do we want and this actually in, like- causes a uh, distribution problem if you're in uh, Germany, right? Because right. in some European places, they will not allow anything that uh, that shows that symbology. Like is, this it still, is this still true in Germany? OK, so back in the Unreal Tournament days. The mm-hmm. version of Unreal that shipped in Germany had no dismemberment, no jibs, and no blood at all. No jibs. Yeah, it That's was it was the law. You couldn't do it. Like in Japan, same thing with uh, skeleton or not Japan, China. Skeletons and bones, like World of Warcraft, had to be edited so that the undead didn't have their bones sticking out. It's some kind of That's cultural. That's you. How are you supposed to be undead? <laughs> That's what I say. But you know, culture, I guess. Yeah, culture. They're, in. Offended, they're offended by things. We're offended by things. If you show a booby in a video game, forget it. You're out of here. Yeah, we're weird That's over America. here. That's America. Yeah, America's like you got a you got a boob in there. Wait, hold America, on. America, we're anti boob. You slaughtered a whole uh, airport full of people with a gun. Fine. Cool. Hold on. Fine. You put a booby in there. What the hell are you doing, boy? <laughs> That's for mommies and babies. Yeah. It's Stop like, it. <laughs> That's for mommies and babies. <laughs> and that's it. Uh, yeah, that's all right, it. well, let's, tuned, let's baby. Let's dive in. <laughs> let's dive into our discussion because there's a lot to say about Wolfenstein and its and its predecessors. Shall we play a game? Let's Can go I say back before you start. Yeah, go ahead. Say something before you start. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> before we started this week, yeah. I had no clue 
what Castle Wolfenstein and Beyond Castle, Castle Wolfenstein was. I thought I did, and then I played the game. Yeah, and I was like, okay. So continue. <laughs> I have very, I have very specific memories of both of those games uh, because I had an Apple II, and right. I played them back then. And we all thought they were awesome back then, but holy <laughs> shit, we have come a long way, folks, a long way. We'll talk about these first. So these were top-down kind of stealth action adventure games. There was a stealth aspect to these games that are a little bit weird, um, inspired by Berserk, of all things, uh, yeah. and also set in World War II. You played an ally spy, escape from a Nazi fortress, navigate through castle mazes, uh, that kind of layout, out, out maneuvering or neutralizing Nazi guards using stealth guns and disguises. Uh, guards respond to suspicious ha- uh, behavior. Not really. Yep, yep. They're kind of not. The AI well, is dumb. If if yeah, they um if you if you um run into the wall, I which I did a lot when mm-hmm. I was trying to figure out how to use the keyboard. Yeah. Um, the screen will go on the Apple II version that I was playing. Yeah. Um, and and it will alert uh the guards and they and they will come come get you. Now I'd like to warn everybody about what I'm going to play. All right. Yeah, everything is 100. No, 150. On yes, audio, right? and it's really terrible. So enjoy what I'm about to play you some audio. Okay, and here you go. He Oct- said octung, yeah. which means attention. Yeah, it means uh, octung baby. Yeah. I didn't. That makes you want to die. Right, and I'm trying to figure out what all those are. So this is Muse software from 1981 um, that that created this berserk type clone for the Apple II, um, which I had never played, and I guess I never really even saw. I don't guess, but the Germans that are walking around are yelling uh, at different German uh, German things, and they're all in the manual. I looked them up as Octoon Halt, Führen, uh, Fulgen. I don't know how to say all these things, but basically, yeah. is attention, stop, fire, follow, I surrender which is great mm-hmm. because you can hold these guys up. Yeah. If you point take their gun stuff. at them, mm-hmm. they will stop and uh, they, they will surrender if they say the, the magic word. There. Yeah. The only downside of that though, is do you, uh, you then kill them. You never let them go. They never. Uh, no, well, you would be, you would be a fool because they're th- just like, so we had talked about metal gear solid and this is where I originally kind of decided to kind of go back and learn about these things is because we talked about in the metal gear solid, the stealth uh, action, games and and uh, uh kojima was inspired by this game i did mm. not know that and mm. it was this this is what happened metal gear got its start uh here as well as did a lot of other things mm-hmm. yeah we'll talk about later so this so this is the really base beginning this and and wolfenstein uh 2 which just sounded like this it's about the same a little louder <laughs> Right, <laughs> they are they are kind of almost the same game in a lot of ways. Right. Like it's barely a sequel. There's it's new content, obviously. There's a couple of new mechanics, or at least the the levels are a little more. I don't know. I don't even know if the word interesting is the right word, but they're a little they're, bit more. They're more complex. Yeah, they're more complex. There's more three dimensionality. But like you said, this is a this is those weird maze games like Berserk, and I I some I'll describe they they describe these things as top down, but they're kind of not the the maze part is top down, uh, but then is front facing for your sprites and characters that are walking around this maze. Yeah, very, there's no there's no cohesive perspective here. This is just how you made yeah, a game this, back then. Yeah, yeah, the maze games were real popular during this time as well, and so it was good to have a maze game, and and it was based on uh, you know. A Nazi World War II stuff, uh, action stealth kind of things that wasn't really out there a lot. And so this kind of occupied a unique space. Silas Warner uh, was interested in creating just that. And he did that. Mm-hmm. Did you know this guy, Silas Warner, who co-founder of uh, Muse Software, which lived and pre- well, pretty much died in the 80s. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he he was he was six, nine, 300 pounds. Good Lord. Uh, uh, seemed to people seem to like him very well. Uh, he lived in Chicago until he was seven and uh, him and his mom moved after his dad tried to kill both of them. And so they went Jeez. on the run. And so, yeah, he's, he's a real interesting character. I did a whole deep dive into, uh, to, to the muse software and, and his rise and, and fall mismanagement again, pretty typical of, of eighties. Yeah. It's uh, early. Nobody knew what the companies. hell they were doing yet. Right. Yeah. Just like, yeah. What, what are we they doing? were making games. 
but they weren't always business people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a fair way of putting it. I was hoping, um, let's see. Yeah. They just did the two games, right? That was it. Well, they did other games too, but this is by far their most recognizable Castle oh, Wolfenstein right, and right. Castle Wolfenstein. And, yep. the, I, and you know, you'll see why, because simplistic gameplay reviewers at the time had kind of poo pooed it a little bit because the graphics were kind of lagging behind his competitors, but the gameplay was so competitive. You were stealthing around, even though line of sight mm -hmm. characters could other, you know, the, the bad guys could see you. The mm -hmm. Nazis could see you. Yeah, they were but like magic. For, yeah, Nazis. for some reason, the detection was, you know, kind of wonky, but that was part of the fun. And then unlocking boxes, uh, getting, uh, I th getting German stuff like, is this some sauerkraut? All right. Yep. Whatever. Yep. Wiener I'll schnitzels. Wiener schnitzel. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, the, the, so I played this a little bit this week, uh, or attempted to. I kind of had a hard time playing it. Um, right. But the emulator stuff on this is a little tricky. But the, um, the, my experience back in the day was, this felt like, whoa, games I thought were just a little spaceman shooting other space things. That's what video games right. were around this time. And this game was saying, no, what if there were doors and walls and yeah. places to hide what and things to collect? And it would remember where you were and what you did. And like that, yeah. I, I don't want to understate how important that is as a founding principle of games moving forward. It's a, ma it's a massive mm -hmm. thing, right? And I don't, I don't think it gets the credit it deserves for that. I agree with you. It's it's got elements of RPG because you're not just trying to beat a clock, right? You're not trying to just run and not think, and you're actually getting to plan. You're getting to stop, uh, monitor uh, the the you know the guards' movements. You can tell which kind of guard they are. Different guards have different uh, you know are, are more aggressive. Yeah. Um. And it's 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 pretty deep. At first, I was. When I started playing this, I played it on the, the Commodore 64 emulation, the Mac emulation, or the, I'm sorry, the Apple II emulation. And I was just blown away with how complex it got because you do have to do a lot of strategy. And not to mention, you don't just point your gun and shoot. You have two. You have to have two joysticks if you're playing this with joysticks, Scott. That's right. Can you imagine having, <laughs> you, you know your dad shit the bed whenever you would mess with the, the one joystick yeah game. even if you just played normally with it he would be mad imagine two right. of them oh my god lose his mind imagine two of them yeah. with them yelling uh nazisms yeah uh, your dad would have had a stroke yeah but uh here he is yeah. saying, this is my dad right there i have audio of him being mad here you go <laughs> that was him He's freaking out <laughs> but yeah i had trouble playing this at first because i couldn't figure out how to shoot the gun and then when i went through the manual and stuff and saw oh i gotta use i gotta use a second uh controller to to point the gun so it, it gets really complex and one of the more complex games i've played uh in a while i couldn't believe it was coming up on an apple II. it was it, it really it, it kept me engaged a lot longer than i thought it would and so i understood almost instantly why kojima and the guys at id software were so inspired uh by this game to to create their own games well, and also to make their own game that was a version of this yeah that's true now, do you want, we're going to move on to what changed the world. You'd think, okay, well, we've left that in the past. The only two notable games that company made were these two. Um, and only a select, very small subsection of humanity ever played the damn things. If mm -hmm. you grew up with one of these computers in your house, maybe a friend of you told you about it and gave it to me on a floppy disk or whatever. Somehow you got this game and you got to play it. Done. You hexer. That's the end of the story. No, it is not. Because <laughs> along comes this. Octung! Octung, baby. Octung. Oh, yeah, babe. All right. Oh, I love that sound, by the way. G gigantic fan of that sound effect, by the way. Where is it? I, have yeah, it. I pulled this, it out by itself. This changed, I love that. This changed first person. Sh this changed everything, right? Yes, but like this invented changed. it and invented the yeah. concept. Now, there, it's not like they weren't eight. other attempt in, attempts in the previous or in previous years to create a first person like experience they're like dungeon crawlers but they were all very rudimentary and sort of move one square at a time and redraw even the environment. muse even muse did the same thing they even had a first person kind of perspective games mm -hmm. where you're walking through mazes like this mm -hmm. yeah there was definitely this sort of thing and it was and, and by the way if you notice in this video if you're watching chat or someone watching on the archive if you're listening i'll describe it uh this game was weird in that the performance of computers at the time which most commonly would have been like 286s sort of thing 
If you yeah, had a three, yeah. I think the I think the minimal requirement with this was I think was a three eighty. This might have been. I remember was, upgrading yeah. for it. I had to get yeah. a better computer for it. But if you were s- suffering with like slowdown, there was a adjustable border system. And right now you can see this blue border. Oh you, yeah, I forgot about that. You're yeah, right. you could pull it all the way out if you had the computer for it, but mm-hmm. most people didn't, so you had to have some level of zoom on that. And it just kind of created a, a more postage stamp or letterboxed experience. Uh, but yeah, this this started, you know, it's a very young id software. Um, they've they this would start what would become a complete alteration of all things video games forever. Like, yeah, <laughs> there's no there is no before, denying it, right? Right. And this was like before they they started working on this before they even got out of their previous contract where they were like, what was it? The Gamer's Edge is what they called their, their dev team mm-hmm. uh, when they were working uh, for, uh, for oh, who was it? Soft. Uh, so, nah, there's another company I'm working with. Not, now a, uh, not 3D Realms, not Apogee. Apogee published it. Uh, right, right. Uh, but I think, yeah, they were all rela- related. Yeah, to they were all hanging out. Those guys were all, it was all shareware. Everybody was doing the stupid you know, uh, here's the shareware disc in a magazine pouch or whatever, and that's how we're going to get this thing around. And we're going to put it on Usenet, and that would that would go all the way up to their Doom era stuff. But right, but this thing was like, uh, you knew when you played this, you just knew we were seeing something massive happen. Yes, you just went, oh, okay, this everything. is a whole thing. This is going to change everything, and it quite literally changed everything. Yeah, and um, you may forget sometimes. You may think, "Oh, Doom was first. No, this was the first first one. This is the this is the engine that this is when they started developing their engine that would go on. You know, to John Carmack was just three D engine baby. Yeah, it was, a genius. Uh, was it ray casting? I believe because this is the first time we're starting to see textures on walls. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we'd had rudimentary uh, boxes and stuff, but it wasn't immersive. Right, and this took this took it to the next level. Yeah, and uh, I do this. This was my first experience with Wolfenstein, and when we started doing this, I was thinking, "Oh, I'll start at the beginning." Wolfenstein 3D. Yeah. Wrong. This was, was That's that, where I got no. confused. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they took basically an, an established name for some gamers, and then just blew it out of the water. And it very mm-hmm. quickly, in a very viral way, for the year for the time this came out, uh, which was 1992. Uh, in a, vi- a very viral way, suddenly this game's spreading like wildfire. Everybody's sharing discs. They're freaking out. They're losing their mind. I bought a new Everybody computer. Everybody wants to be BJ Black Blaskowitz. That's right. That's me. He wants to blast some freaking zombies and or not zombies, uh, Nazis. And at one point, <laughs> you do get to fight Mecha Hitler. That's your final boss. Spoiler. Yeah. Uh, I th- I used to think that was the coolest thing ever to put uh, Hitler's half-eaten <laughs> shitty body inside of a robot. And then fight it and kill it, and I loved it. It was the just so much crew, fun. The Tom Hall, John Romero, John Carmack, all those Adrian Carmack, all those guys, man, they were they were young, and they just wanted to thumb their nose at the establishments anytime they were told, "Don't do that." They doubled down. Or you can't said, do it. Oh, yeah, really? Exactly. Then we're gonna put. Oh, we shouldn't be doing so much imagery and blood. We're putting double. Yep. Don't, also, don't tell us what uh, to welcome. Do. And then eventually, it's like, hey, welcome to Doom. Would you like to see some yeah. additional blood and a whole bunch of like satanic imagery? How about that? That'd be fun. Yeah. No, no, don't do that. Speaks, oh, we're gonna double down again and do it anyway. <laughs> nothing speaks to the youth like rebellion, and uh, they this this was rebellious. Even though it may doesn't like it now, as it looks like some you know, three D, two D sprite game that. You know, we're so used to all this stuff. It seems like nothing, but this is big news back in the day. Yeah. And if you look at the SNES version of the game, which I will now share. No, no thanks. I'm going to share this with people. You need to see this some is, of the This is an atrocity. And by the way, <laughs> I've got some conflicting data on this. Uh, there was, they they did not do, uh, you know, John Carmack and Romero and all those guys were not intimately involved with this conversion until they had to be they agreed to make a port right and then they contracted it out to a third party another programmer that programmer got sick according to what i had read and according to interviews uh with with uh romero um and it got delayed and so they ended up having to step in and finish it out so the, this other developer has uh i'm trying to remember the 
person's name. I had it in my notes. Why is it not in my notes? Not Tom Hall. Anyway. Not, not uh, Yeah, it wasn't Tom Hall. Soft disk earlier, by the way. That was another name I was trying to to pull up. Uh, but anyway, yeah, yeah. It didn't they it didn't go the as planned. And so they had to make it themselves. And is this the SNES version? Yeah, or is this, this the is this, this is SNES? Oh, that looks like butthole. Well, it looks it doesn't look as good as the PC version, just generally, but right. um but it has uh, the guy won't slow down to look at it, but it's got these replaced Oh yeah, here are the here are the giant rats instead of dogs. Yeah, instead of dogs, <laughs> giant rats. Yeah, it's just Nintendo, man. They were it's weird. fine to kill. Oh, sure, it's fine to kill rats, Nintendo, but yeah. not. Oh, and what was he stealing there? Was he stealing cheese? That is hilarious. So yeah. they replaced that that sprite. So when you go in, uh, when you kill the German shepherds in the in the uh, DOS version, yeah, uh, you can pick up the dog food and it gives you a health boost. Yeah. Um. Here it looks like he picked up a wheel of cheese. Yeah. Spot on. It Spot also on. it also controlled kind of like ass, but it still had this yeah. right here. I love that sound. Could yeah, hear that all I did day. like that. The music was actually kind of neat. Uh, oh, hidden rooms. That was a big deal. Hidden rooms, and they just entered in one of the hidden. Yeah, rooms. monster. Really they call it. They uh, they would eventually go on to be called monster. There's the there's the the plus by the way instead of the instead of the symbols. Uh, they oh, would yeah. go on to call that um, uh, monster closets. Especially yeah, when Doom came true. around, and they got really good at it. You know, still see it today. You walking around Resident mm -hmm. Evil Eight, you know, bump into a door. Oh shit! There's 15 things in this hidden space. Yeah, you know, like you just that's so much fun. Yeah, that you did. That's not something you would have planned for, but it shows you how much ID uh, really played their own games um, because it really. You wouldn't think, oh, what would be cool in a maze? Well, what if you accidentally bumped up against a wall? and it opened or if you accidentally shot a wall because that's what happens most of the time most of the time you're not looking for these things no you just have uh, to do you it just, yeah you just accidentally do it it's like well so what's down this hallway oh okay and then you shoot something like oh oops oh yep. the door's opening something's there's, opening there's mustache free uh hitler that just showed him yeah um so the other thing i didn't <clears throat> i didn't tell you i don't know if i've told anybody else this but i met john romero in 1993 when this Wild. was or no i'm sorry 92 right before all this stuff went off Right. He was working at a, uh, a little software store here in town called Software and More. So he was here in oh, Salt Lake yeah. City, living here for a bit. I think he was either with his mom or I can't remember what the deal was. So it was all right before that. And I met this dude because I was out buying a stack of floppy disks at Software and More and uh, shook hands with long-haired uh, uh, John Romero. And yeah. then about a month later, I hear about this shit popping off. And I went, oh, my gosh, dude, I just <laughs> talked to that guy. I talked to him... Uh last year um he has a he has a discord server yeah um and i got a, an opportunity i think i think it was salentis one of our community members who had an opportunity he won a raffle essentially to talk uh to john romero who lives in ireland now i believe um and he he passed that opportunity on to me so i got to sit in a nice little uh skype meeting with john romero last year and it was Pre it was still just entertaining that's pretty cool he's questions. i think he just got added to the game lifetime hall of, of fame thing i think yeah i can't remember it i don't know if him and carmack even talk anymore there was a lot of talk about no. those two not getting along they're um, both true visionaries in their own areas um of course romero being just a great less fun kind of guy he was really good at, at, at the at the larger vision and carmack could just make anything happen i mean you would just ask carmack and he'd be like yeah i can make that happen and yeah. uh like just American brilliant, McGee, brilliant American McGee, uh, uh, Romero, and a bunch of other guys would sit around and they would uh, make amazing level design and character design and all this stuff, and then they'd just say, "Hey, Carmack, can you make an engine that'll do all this dumb shit?" And he's like, I "Sure can. I'm a huge nerd, and let's sure do can. it." If you've never read or listened to the audio book of Masters of Doom, highly recommend uh, that, and it kind of it kind of chronicles a lot of the stuff we're talking about. And yeah. he's got some great interviews. Just uh, uh, the the uh, game developers conferences and stuff. You look up uh, Romero's stuff on that, where he's talked about. You know, I think was it called uh, the moratorium? Mm -hmm. I think that's what they usually call them, the moratoriums on a certain game. Yeah, and they'll go they'll go through it, and they're, they're just amazing. Now they also followed up with something called Spears Spear of Destiny, which was basically mm -hmm. mission packs, um, or or like DLC in a weird way. Like it was considered a full game. Yeah, kind you would of, uh, you would uh, back in the day. Yeah, the way id operated is they would develop the first however many levels of a game uh and then you would get it off shareware whether it be on a demo disc or if you download it off a bulletin board or whatever and then 
you would get to complete the game by buying these uh, you know expansions like th- the extra parts if you wanted to finish the story right they hook you they'd hook you with the with the freebie it's a drug it's the it's the drug dealer uh business model that's how they get you right that's how they get you and the you. one you're playing right now looks freaking amazing was that the game boy advance which one is this one no is this, this is this pc really this good. is uh, a okay, pc awesome. version of spear destiny and it's it's okay much better i mean i think somebody's playing it in a modern computer is how it's looking yeah not only this good but being 16 by 9 and there's a few things going yeah. on here well there's the overworld map too I just, that yeah. blew my mind the first time i actually pulled up i'm like oh my god this thing is huge yeah by the way if you've never played it there's a rpg called oh, yes wolf, there's the um, uh yeah doom rpg or the wolfenstein there's RPG, a doom that... one as well so there's two doom. of them there's a there's a wolfenstein yeah. one and a doom one they're both based on this these these properties and they're amazing turn-based little games i think they may have been gba games i gotta right. find those again because those are so freaking fun they're so I, good i I think I read a little bit about this. Uh, Romero was uh, was when he got I, somebody gave him a phone or something, and he's like, "Oh, we should we should do." You know, he's like the visionary. He's always like, "Oh, you know, what we should do we should do this," and he uh, and, and they did. And it was like what two thousand six, eight or something like something that. Something like was, that. Oh, I gotta yeah. find it. Where? But is it's, this? It's well. Uh, it's well liked as as well. Harder to emulate though because it's going to be a really interesting time when we start getting nostalgia for uh for you know, Facebook games and mobile games. And we're like, how the hell are we supposed to emulate this? I mean, there's blue stacks for Android, that kind of stuff. But getting the, you know, getting the actual files themselves and where they're at, it's going to get more difficult, like the ROMs. It's gonna oh, here it is. Okay. Wolfenstein RPG uh, 2008. Um, iOS, Java, and Brew. So it's, it didn't go any Brew, further. Brew, yes. Yeah. That's some Apple stuff going Remember back that? home, right? Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh that is such a fun game man i wish that was available somewhere easy to get it's not on the store anymore yeah i did i didn't i didn't see it anywhere in the usual locations a deeper dive may may reveal it maybe it's in a monster room somewhere and I, on the internet and i just haven't because look haven't at this look at this closet. screen i just put it up it's uh it's turn-based so you you do it like a dungeon crawler yeah like uh wizardry or something and so you're just kind of inching through this this these installations and whatever and you're taking turns and you're picking up loot and it's it's an rpg it's so good yeah i don't know why you're going against the guy with a with a with a wrench but you know a plumber's <laughs> wrench but hey why not what, who am i to judge it's a gordon freeman kind of vibe going it on is kind game. of a <laughs> uh, but anyway, I thought I, I was a big fan of Spirit but, Destiny as well. That that game and those mission packs were were huge, and they were basically they were basically when I went, all right. Well, I am now forever an ID Software fan. I will never not play yeah. whatever they do. And sure enough, they would make. Uh, I, can't, I can't think of an ID Software game that I didn't like until Rage, which is and when even that's that's when those guys fell apart. Yeah, but I think that was because of internal problems right that was that was more it's a mix of things but yeah 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 that um, happens that it rage happens. rage one the engine was real cool the the ed tech engine even today is very cool it's like that mm-hmm. wasn't really the problem i just think those guys were bonking heads i mean by then romero had long left he went and did uh daikatana over there at yeah. uh, i forgot the name of the studio that's not there anymore um, but that that was a bomb that thing sucked like mm-hmm. romero will openly admit too like Daikatana was uh, ambitious and it was like, hey, post Quake, what are you going to do now? Oh, the next great shooter. That yeah. was not the next great shooter. That was it the was next great mistake. Not. It was bad. It was very, it's very it's bad. funny. Lightning sometimes only happens in, you know, in, in this, this type of environment where there's a specific set of skills yep. that all combine well and just, you know, that's how it is sometimes. Have you John Mayer, Car- Carmack, Tom Hall, Agent Carmack, all yep. those guys together. Yep. And the two Carmacks aren't related. I used to think they were yeah, brothers. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Every time I see it, I always go, wait, are they related? No, that's not right. Yeah, not those right. dudes are those dudes are unrelated. I know exactly two Carmacks in my in my uh history of learning about gaming and and they're right there together. Did you yeah. ever play Return to Castle Wolfenstein back in what year I, was that? It's actually my favorite game. I played this thing for freaking ever. I just I just love this game so much. Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Yeah. Uh 2001, right? Is 2001, that that yeah. Yep, you're right. Yeah. Uh two, let's see, Mac OS and Linux got it in 2002. Um yeah, this game was rad and it had some of the most fun like assault type 
maps. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I remember at the time thinking all shooters need to feature this mode. It's so good. Yeah, and it still felt stealthy. And it felt like it it just had so much of the heart of everything that was Wolfenstein to me. So yeah. it, it, I still still love it. It still looks good. I'm looking at it right now on screen. It's still, no, it's fine. It's still serviceable. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's very serviceable. Now, here's the thing to note. They were not done. They had a few expansions. There's some other stuff. And RPG I mentioned and all that. But they were about to launch an amazing return to form mm. in the in the modern games. We're not going to talk about those in detail, but I want to recommend people get them on. They're always on sale. You can get them just about everywhere. Every platform's got them. New Order. Um, yes. I can't forget. I, something Colossus is the second one. And then the I would avoid the one with the I, with the sisters with his daughters. That's not a good game. Don't play that. That's oh, not that's good, not a good. Is no, his daughter? It's bad. No, his two. It's his oh. two twin daughters, or I don't know if they're twins. Oh, oh yeah, okay, yeah, I got you. It's not good. It's a bad game. Yeah, Blaskowitz is in jail or something. It's it's bad. Uh, Blaskowitz does not get enough love, and I want a shirt with OG Blaskowitz just right on my screen with one eyebrow raised. I I used to love that would. You have no idea how much that blew my mind back in the day when there wasn't a health. Well, there was a health bar, but his damage was on his face. Yeah, you knew dude. when you were in trouble, because yeah. the damage was on his face. Even better, even better in Doom, but it was yeah. it started there. And you're right; it was like this moment of like badass. Look at this right. We can do this. Thing. Yeah, it was so cool. Why the hell we got bars and shit? Yeah, that's some, I agree. That was really innovative crap. idea. I don't know whose idea it was, but I freaking love it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you want to, you want to really get your head around um, the games. Here's my here's my order. I would play them in. I would play the classic just to get your feet wet. Like just get a taste for why that thing's the OG, right? You need to feel it. It doesn't hold up great because yeah. a lot of really cool shit came after. But but you need to just from a historic perspective get your feet wet with original Castle Wolfenstein 3D, and then yeah, 3D. I would jump straight to uh, Return. I right. would play All, RPG if you babe. can find it. And then these new ones are awesome. And there's a new what do you one think coming. About enemy territory. You, you liken that one, the multiplayer. Uh, I can't remember only? if I played much enemy territory. It was mostly it was all, it was all multiplayer, right? Yeah, it was all multiplayer. We played that a good bit, and I I liked it because it was set in that world. But it was friends. You know what I mean? Yeah. Friends um, with here. Trying to remember. Let's see, Steam still has a has that. Uh, now yeah, I missed can... out on. Oh, it's free to play on Steam if you want to go. Play is it? It. Okay. Yeah. And Let's people are playing. Oh, this they just released this uh as a as a playable Steam game on in 2022. Right. And it's now just like a free to play multiplayer. I'm going to do this later. I'm going to do this right now. Why are I'm, we even talking? What are we even doing here? What are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah, I'm doing that. That's what I'm doing. I didn't but it know was, that. Uh, you had mentioned earlier you said uh the the uh pfft, what's where I'm looking for. Did you ever play the the one that was just called Wolfenstein back in 2008 the raven software thing i think it was uh did you play that one no that one i don't think was good <laughs> right i <laughs> yeah i remember like right. i went i went from return and i played it and then that one came along and i was like eh, i wasn't really interested and then i came back later mm. on Mm. but uh i'm pretty interested in, the, in some new stuff too right aren't they, they got some new Wolfenstein the new ones are amazing just, yeah and the, and the new yeah. the third one or three i guess is all they're calling it the new one that's sort of been yeah. announced but no one's actually seen a gameplay yet that looks awesome really excited about that here are here they are ranked by uh culture all right so oh, here's what culture they vultures. rank them number 12 so these are the top 12 wolfenstein games i think there may only be 12 I was about to say if I if I'm 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 looking at it now, mm-hmm. uh, and yeah, I think if if number twelve is on there is that, then they've included everything. Yeah, I think so too. So number twelve, they have Beyond Castle Wolfenstein. So sorry, Apple Two uh, version of the game, you're you're bad. Right. Uh, Eleven is Wolfenstein Young Blood. That's the newish one. I told you to avoid. Oh my God, they put yeah, it's bad. Young Blood below. The new one. That's because it's poop. I mean, the, but the original one. It's poop. Me. It's garbage. It's not a good game. It's a real uh, unfortunate thing. I kind of wish it didn't exist. Uh, mm-hmm. Number 10, Castle Wolfenstein, which is your uh, original there. Yeah. Uh, nine, Wolfenstein Cyber Pilot. I don't even know what that is, that but I'm in. I'm, I'm get, all in. It looks like you kind of get to play as uh, Mecha Hitler. Is that what's going on? This came out from Arcane and Machine Games back in... I don't remember this at all. It's published by Bethesda? Yeah, 2019? I, I don't remember this at all. Yeah, me either. It must have one. been some... I don't know what this was. must have been some weird side thing. 
Uh, Wolfenstein or Stein 2009, uh, they put at number eight. Uh, s- number seven, Wolfenstein em- Enemy Territory, which we just yeah. talked about. Number six, Wolfenstein 3D or uh, RPG, Ooh. Um, which I, I agree that should be on this list. Five, Wolfenstein The Old Blood, which is fantastic. Uh, four, Return to Castle Wolfenstein, also great. Three, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus, fantastic game. Mm-hmm. Uh, two, Wolfenstein 3D, the original 3D. And number one, New Order. With the a, New Order with is a bullet. great. Great game. New Order right now, I mean, it came out uh, PS4, the Xbox One era. You know, it's not that old. It's like 2012 or something. Right. Let's see if I have the actual date. Uh, 2014. 14. Uh, 14. And it's so good. Gosh dang it. Go play that game. Oh, wow. Breaking news. I I just, I was looking while you were talking about that, because uh, now you've got me so excited. The fact that it rates so high, this uh, RPG version of Wolfenstein, they did uh, port over uh, Doom 2 RPG, uh, according to Rock Paper shotgun to what on may what's that now to what where we're gonna play uh, it to, to pc what so if that engine is there uh might we see the wolfenstein version i wonder and this was just announced in may so interesting let's okay take a look at, oh, so it's a fan to, thing right something like that yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna i'm gonna shoot you this link uh he'll be under uh mecca hitler in the discord server um oh, can't miss him shit I'm playing yeah, so this. a curiouser and curiouser. So it's a fun, it's a fan made PC port. It looks like. Oh, uh, is it a fan made port? So it's generally it's not a, it's not OG? official. Yeah, but it's oh. it's pulled out of the. So somebody reproduced. It's a true it. port. Port. It's not like a. Yeah, these games are oh. great, dude. Yeah, they look. I, awesome. I'm I'm they happy that anyway. the fandom out there is trying to do something, but I really want Bethesda or whoever owns the rights to these two things. Just put them out. Put them out on I don't know. Put them on phones again or something. Do something. <laughs> Release them for the PS5. Come on. Put them on the PlayStation 5. Put them on the PlayStation. Uh, all right. Let's move on uh, away from Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein's great. Go play it, everybody. All of these things we mentioned, they're great. They're, they're Except those first two are real tough, but they they deserve to be seen. Go li- at least see they, some video. Yeah, they deserve to be seen and heard. It's a lot of fun uh, holding up Nazis on the on that first and second one. Uh, they'll raise their hands up, and you can you can end up shooting them anyway. But then you search the bodies. There's a there's a timing mechanic to unlocking a uh, chest, which uh, that that elevates the the tension because mm-hmm. you're trying to open a chest, and you've got like so many seconds to do it uh, before the guards make her back around mm-hmm. uh, to get you. Guns yep. and Avron, by the way, was an inspiration for Silas Warner uh, to to put really? this in that world. Wow. And I I've never seen it. Um, and I, I wanted to catch some of this past week. I didn't, I didn't get around to it. You've never seen Guns of Navarone? It. It's been ages for me, but, um, it's yeah, I've, I've never seen it. I've seen like clips and stuff like, uh, you know, here's a clip from one of the top 100 movies from the blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, cool. It's old as dirt. I mean, yeah, it's 1961, David Niven, Gregory Peck, Anthony Quinn. It's a great movie. You should say it into it, into yeah. it. But um, does it, does it star BJ Blazkowicz? It does not. And star, Otherwise, it does not star him, but it does have uh, Richard Harris. He's pretty great. Okay, yeah, he's the the, the the late great Richard Harris, kicking ass in uh, okay. the Guns of Navarro. Oh, there is. I did find the Wolfenstein RPG, uh, and it is an IPA file. What? And I will see if I can emulate it, Brian. If you Brian, did that, put it you, on our devices. Put it on the Amber Nick. I'll play it tonight. All right, we'll see if we can do. <laughs> I'm this. sure it'll be no problem at all. Just to do it by tonight. <laughs> It'll be great. <laughs> All right, let's move on. It's time for a little bit of this business. Destroy it. <laughs> time to play Guess My Game. We uh, play audio from an old game, and we try to guess what it is. And the chat room sometimes uh, gets involved, likes to say stuff. Uh, by the way, big thanks to everybody who showed up this morning. I know it's a weird time to record this show. Oh, yeah. Doing this on a Saturday morning, if we didn't already mention that. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah. Um, let's get to mine. Here is uh, your hints to start things. Uh, it is a Super Nintendo Entertainment System game. Came out in Japan in 1995. Japan? But did not come out until 2011 in North America on the Nintendo DS. Okay, so okay. this is an important oh, note. Yes, okay. Because it did so, come out. It just came out a long time later uh, when the original game came out in 1995. You, lo- you may love it long time. I'm not sure. Okay, thank you. But here it is. Let's see if you know what this is. Flu 
Flutey flutey flute. Flutey flute. Flutey flute. It's got some of my favorite sound work of all Super Nintendo games ever. Oh, and this is music. This is sound from the SNES game, not from the DS game. Anyway, any guesses? Any uh, questions? You got three if you okay, want. Okay, so I, got, I get three questions. Yeah. Uh, came out for, you said, the DS, right? But originally nope. for the SNES. R- originally the... SNES, later DS, yeah. Right, right. So Super Famicom would have been for the Japanese version. Correct. So, um... Is this a is this a, a Nintendo property? You always it, have to ask that. When it you is get not a Nintendo game, right? Definitely not a Nintendo original. It's no, not a Nintendo. But I will original. say to add on to that, it is a massive developer publisher uh, of the era. Okay. Um, is it an RPG? Yes. Okay, so we've got not first party necessarily for Nintendo, so it's not one of their IPs. It is an RPG. Yep. Um. And a big, and it is a big IP. Although I would argue right, bigger in Japan initially, but it's now big in the states. People like it here a lot. Is it? Um, and Europe. Final Fantasy Tactics. Uh, incorrect. That's your second question down. Oh wait, no, it's your third question that's, down. That's now my third question. My, that was my guess. Yeah. yeah, I should have. I should have asked another question and did did that. <laughs> Shoot. Well, now at least you have another guess if you want to take it. Okay. Um, well, I'll say you're. A, you're you're in adjacent territory if that helps you at all it does not so <laughs> does it help me one bit does not help me one ass bit yeah um to that. dragon quest 18 oh <laughs> shit you know what i'm gonna give you a half point because it is dragon quest right it is dragon quest six for oh, that was what I was gonna say. I knew the, it had to be uh, one of the. the yeah. This music sounded very reminiscent of both of those. Um, it's uh, it's it's one of the most. I couldn't. I I've, I have to admit, I recently discovered this doing doing stuff on the Ambernick. It is one of the prettiest yes. JRPG pixel games ever I've ever seen. Like right, I didn't right. know it looked this good. And five did not look like this. Five not look like this, man. Yeah, everything leading up to it didn't look, look as good. And that may have been, you know, maybe those were ports from NES titles. And again, they were all in Japan, so I don't know. But this sixth one just looked insane. The detail on the buildings and the towns and the music and the sound effects. Like, next I've become level. a real big fan. I I did not, I had not played any of the any of the the games in the series until more recently. And it was on the Game Pass. What was mm-hmm. it, 14? What, which uh, one was it? 11, is it? Um, 11 i can't remember. it was one of those roman numerals that was always throwing me off it's and, a very uh, good played, game very good game. i though. played it and i was like oh, okay i get it yeah and i started going back and i started looking at them and i've played a few of them on the amber nick myself yeah this really is like so it. this is considered right up there with the best the best the best on every list i find is the, the newest best newest the one best. people love that new one so that new one i'm the best of the best sir yes best sir the best yes sir but this game is still great, and I've been playing it a bit, and I uh, would recommend it. It is, again, the Super Famicom uh, slash uh, North American uh, Nintendo DS release of that game, Dragon Quest VI. And all, and for those, uh, we haven't really done a show about this yet. Well, we did a little yet. bit, because we talked Final Fantasy, but we haven't really talked. Or did we, did, we do a final, did we do a Final Fantasy special? I don't remember now. I think we did a Final Fantasy <laughs> on the poop show oddly. i think i i don't i want to say that we did some final fantasy stuff too but i don't think we've done it in the context of this show i don't remember at one point we but will, I, we've, but, me and you yeah. have definitely went at length talking about final fantasy yeah i think the part of the reason we haven't done an actual show on it is it's a beast you almost have to do yeah. it per game it's like you can't just do the whole th- i mean it just feels like a lot but anyway, uh, that was Square doing Final Fantasy. Enix right. was the company doing uh, Dragon Quest, among other games. And uh, that is where those two two of the greatest JRPG creators of all time finally merged and became mm-hmm. Square Enix. So a lot of people don't know where that name comes from, but there you go. And some of you do, we and did. you're laughing at me now. Like, Scott, of course we know this, but some people don't. All right. I think we did Fantasy Star, and we said we were going to get back to Final Fantasy, and we never did because it is such a beast it's so good dude. i think that's what happened it's so I'm, good but we we've talked about yeah we've talked about seven before because we went back and 
and played it when the remake was coming out for some reason or another. I can't remember what we did it for. Yeah, I don't remember either, but I think we'll we'll yeah. get around to it. The point is, uh, those games hold the hell up. And they're great. Yeah, they do. Uh, let's play yours. Do you say it's an NES 1987 game? Anything else you want to N- tell me about this? NES 1987. I'm not giving you squawk because you got three questions. Oh, and I'll, how about this? I'll tell you this. It was released in North America in 1987. And unlike your game, the opposite happened. It oh. did not release in Japan until 1988. Ooh, a couple of years later, that tells me something. Yeah. And All the right. EU didn't get it until 1990. Wow. EU. Look at you. All right. You. Let's see what we got here. It's got a lot of music in there. Yeah, love the music. Yeah. No guesses yet. Love this music. It's a soundtrack of my life, baby. gosh uh what year 87 87 I, I never played this game i it's it's the game that i i knew about and i watched some videos on but i never played it um gosh dude all right question number one ask me the first ask if i probably first thing i'd ask is like who's the developer <laughs> Just saying, if I was... Right. Who's the developer, my, Brian? It's, it's rare, and I'll even give you the publisher a claim. How about that? Does that kind of get you started yeah. at least a little bit? Yeah. Um, well, that's interesting. Europe got it later, but rare it was mm-hmm. Europe. They were European yeah. developer. Crazy. Um. Oh, early rare stuff. Mm-hmm. Is, it, uh, is it based on a famous IP of some kind? No. Totally original then. Yeah. Um at least I don't know of any of IP that it was based on. And somebody will probably go, Oh, you didn't read the books? No, no, I did not. <laughs> Dumbass. No, I didn't. Not not publicly not knowledge about that. Uh <sighs> I got one more question, don't I? Is it a side scroller? It would be side scroller. Okay. Correct. I'm all out of questions. Is what it, if I told you uh, Chris and Tim Stamper worked on it as designers? That doesn't help me know. at all. Yeah, I know, right? It, here we. All right. Is this game called Let's Go on an Adventure Through the Woods? Oh, the, that's a com. good... That's, it is an adventure, and it's just not in the title, but that's, that is a good uh, narrowing down, and I'll give you just w- w- one more. All just right. One, yeah. one more guess. I really don't know. Yeah, yeah. Wonder Boy goes to school. I have no idea. Perfect. Nailed it. Yeah. Wonder Boy goes to school. The adventure of the from Rare from 1987 <laughs> or the NES. Yeah. Nailed it. Wizards yeah. and Warriors. Oh, Wizards and Warriors. What? I knew Wizards that. Wizards and Warriors. I remember that game. Damn yes. it. Yes. Does anyone in the chat get it? Oh, yeah. And there were there were sequels, but it was it's not Greg got known it. for his sequels, right? Yeah, good job, yeah, Greg. Get, get Look, Greg. Greg teaching school yeah, Greg and Martin, remembering Greg. cool shit. That's awesome. Uh, well, you stumped me there, dude. Well done. That was good. I love the music. Holy crap. It blew me away when I was digging around. Uh, apparently, David Wise was the composer on that. And I was like, oh, what beautiful audio stuff. I'm like, I got to get this. You know, it'd be fun, although I'm sure this exists, so it's a waste of time. But um, somebody on YouTube's already done it. But somebody somewhere has gone like, what is the best sounding NES title of all time? It's got to be it. Right. Thing. Right. It's got to be. And it's got to be that one, right? I think it is. This guy did Marble Madness. Oh, I love Marble Madness. For the NES. Yeah, it was the NES version, I suppose. Yeah, California game stuff. He did a bunch of stuff. Man, this guy was prolific. Oh, here we go. Top, top 150 best NES music tracks. Five hours. Uh, <laughs> Five hours. To, to buckle up. The uh, 35 most graphically mind-blowing NES games. Like, there's tons of these. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Top 10 NES bangers. Best songs of the NES. <laughs> See, I like when they call them bangers. Yeah. Top Gun dubbed uh, with its Nintendo game sounds. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> somebody. T- I don't know, but I want to took- play. I, I saw another one. There's a Game Boy Advance called It's Mr. Pants. I'm in. Let's go. And I want to play It's Mr. Pants. Pants. 
Here, let me look at this. Game Boy Advance. I, it. I don't know anything about this, but it's to create rectangles which have to be two by three blocks or larger to clear them from the grid. So it's one of those games. That's a puzzle game. Yeah. All right. Well, let me hit play here. But the title is worth it. Let me just see what this is. Here, chat. We'll show you. It's Mr. Pants. It's Mr. Pants. <laughs> Pants. <laughs> That's exactly what he did. Did you mean to do that? <laughs> I had no idea. I've never heard it before. That's they did so exactly funny. What I done. That's exactly right. <laughs> he's got, he's got a big underwear. He's not even pants. They're, they're, it's English pants. They're underwear. They're underroots. They're literally tidy whities right? What Except is they're this not white. game? I'll skip ahead so I can see it. That's those puzzles. Oh, so you're clearing out like... Uh, okay, there's it's like the Tetris grid kind of things where you're clearing out to to just yeah, it's, it's kind of Tetrisy, but so you can clear the so you can see the picture behind it. I guess so. It's one of those. Uh, it's one of those. Uh, they have a title, right? Oh, and it's using the rare logo for part of that. Yeah, but this is pretty cool. Uh, Never even heard of this. Like a reverse Tetris, and it clears out the image like you would do for. You know the the horn dogs back in the day. It's like I need to clear this picture so I can see the porn behind. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of like that idea. Yeah, no. When I played, um, uh, the, the, oh, what was it called with the pipes? Uh, shit. Oh, Frisky Tom back in the day. Oh, Frisky Tom. That's yeah, a great one. That game, yeah, that Frisky arcade Tom. game, was all about. It. If you had the, if you knew the dip switches, you put them on Japanese mode, and the lady you were trying to eliminate all the bubbles from her tub, <laughs> she was naked in there. But if you did it in America, the dip switches were set to be just a swimsuit lady, which was kind of annoying. Oh, yeah. you have see, see, look, the Japanese are like nudity. Sure. <laughs> uh, swastikas. No. Well, America, we had just the opposite. Swastikas. We, yeah, sure. We had that game in our basement, though. So my brother and I knew all the tricks. We knew what to do. Right. We had it figured out. Well, I'm cheating it right now. I just Google the image or naked. So that's perfect. Now I know. Yeah. And it's so not really great, did. is it? It's yeah, bad. It's not great. Frisky. It was, but it, it's not great, but it's the best we had. Uh, let's see if I can find it too. So I can show chat if it's not too crazy. Um, let's see. I thought Frisky Tom was great. At the it's time. Mr. Pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> I'm Mr. Pants. <laughs> oh, I just did a non filtered search of Frisky Tom and oh, that got that's that went a bad places. Idea, that was a bad right? idea. Well, this this will give people the idea. Hold on. Okay, so it's this little, this little, we, this is how easily entertained very young boys can be, but this is the American one where she's wearing the, she's wearing the bikini, but the, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. this is so dumb. It. We were just like so excited to get all those bubbles gone. It was so dumb. Bubbles, 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 icy cleavage, bubbles, what a, bubbles. What a sad, what a sad <laughs> thing that is. That's lame. Oh, all right. The master well, of your domain. There you go. Uh, well done with that. Let's move on to a little bit of feedback from our listeners. Welcome to the treasure room. Time for some of that listener feedback. We got an email that came to us at playretroshow at gmail.com. You can also send your text to 801 471 0462. This email says, Hello, Scott and Brian. Thanks for over a decade of podcasting. Yeah. Would you do a, deg a, a, degment, a segment of game series as titled Harvest Moon. I recall <laughs> that it was on the SNES, but may have had an earlier release. Thanks for doing Mega Man and Zelda as well, Franklin. Well, Franklin. Uh, well, Franklin. I was just thinking I'm about down. this series because Harvest Moon is responsible for uh, lots of things. Like, um, Oh, yeah. So inspirational. So many games. Like, I don't even know if you have Animal Crossing without Harvest right. Moon. I don't know if you have games like Stardew Valley or... Mm -hmm. hundreds of other indie titles and otherwise so without it so it's a real rocky history though um there are some harvest moon games that are considered amazing classics and there are some that are considered just garbage jank poo poo head garbage gank yeah poo poo head yep all that so we're gonna Indeed. we're gonna put it on the consideration list why not you know yeah i think it's a, i think it's a no-brainer i definitely want to this is one that i want to hit maybe next time i go around we just did a lot of nes stuff so snes and all that stuff yeah so we probably need to probably gonna end up wait arcade somewhere or something i guess today was kind of pc though yeah so. today was mostly pc even mm -hmm. though it started out in apple and i didn't know that when i started i was like we're gonna do some pc stuff oh i remember i remember wolfenstein that was all kinds of pc and yeah. then i had you know two titles that started right off that were apple 
Yeah, too. old I'm Apple II like, oh. shit from the day. I didn't back know in this. The day. Yeah. When when I Steve... liked that I'm a hillbilly whenever I go back in my memories. Is it I was like <laughs> <laughs> goo goo or my guess I'm a gold prospector. That's what I'm really sure. doing. Sure. I think that's back when Apple was probably worth they were maybe a million dollar company then or something. Yeah. It's Boy. pretty amazing because I was I was kind of a it is it was kind of amazing to see that the inspiration that it was to some of my favorite developers mm -hmm. and that they were working on apples, yep. which was was interesting. Yeah, I found. Oh, it, yeah. yeah, that was big stuff. Then. Intriguing. Really, uh, really pushed the personal computer game market. At the mm -hmm. time. Our next discussion is going to be Marvel versus Capcom. Yes, that's right. We'll mm -hmm. start with 1996's X-Men versus Street Fighter. We'll move to 97's Marvel superheroes versus Street Fighter. 98's Marvel one. vs. Capcom Clash of Superheroes. They're all good. Favorite. Yes. They're my favorite of the Capcom uh, fighter things that aren't... Well, I played a lot of Street Fighter 2 Turbo, like a lot, so I can't say mm -hmm. that that's not like King of the Hill because it kind of is. But these crossovers were so much freaking fun. They were so over the top and so good. So I loved them. Uh, and uh, yeah. Capcom has their... Uh, what do they call it? Showcase? Is that what everybody's calling now since we don't have E3? Uh, so Capcom is doing their showcase Monday. Interested to see what they have there. I yeah. doubt it's going to be any new X Men versus Street Fighter stuff. But still, could be. I don't know. Street Fighter Capcom Six. On my mind. Street Fighter Six came out what a week and a half ago, and uh, yeah, people are loving it. There's, I could see them doing something. I don't know. They've already got DLC. They announced at the game uh, fest yesterday or two days ago. Yeah, wouldn't it be amazing if we if we predicted it? Yeah, maybe, it would like, be yeah, we know stuff. Yeah, I'll bet we get an announcement for a bunch of stuff, including I'll bet there's a new Resident Evil game in the works. I'll bet there's a new Monster Got Hunter it. in the works. And I'll bet, um, what was the other thing? Oh, and they're going to talk more about Dragon's Dogma 2, which they announced at the Xbox or the PlayStation event earlier in the year. So. Right. Anyway. So much stuff going so on right stuff. now with, with the new video games, the Diablo 4. I was really tempted. I was like, oh, my God, we need to hit the OG Diablos. I'm like, well, we just did PC stuff. Yeah, we'll get I to really it. I want to go back. Yeah. I've been playing Diablo 4 to death, and I've just about beat uh, the sixth act, which is the final bit of the, of the story anyway. Nice. Um, the, level, uh, is the level cap's 100 now, and I'm only yeah. level 42 or something. Oh, you're so. playing hardcore like Bo, right? No, hell no, <laughs> hell no. Where, where's he at? I, I, I was, I, I popped in real quick last night, but I, I couldn't tell what level um, he's on. Well, he's as of last night, I think he was 76 or something. So nice, working his way to 100. He wants to get on that statue and be one of the first thousand to, uh, to beat the game on hardcore yeah. without dying. And so far, so good. He hasn't died. He's had a couple of close calls. He had he's three other nervous a couple of times. He's had three other people playing with him, and they've all died. <laughs> so he's oh my gosh. One. He's the only one left. Is he over 80? All right, chat says he's over 80, 81 last over night. Over 80, that is awesome. He Pulling was, for him. He played all, I mean, he's been, this is all he's been doing is playing this oh, game. Oh, God, yes. Every time I'm on Twitch and streaming, I'm like, yeah. well, let's do so. Oh, yep, he's still on. Yep, still over there. Still cranking his it. Life. He's doing great. He's still um, cranking it. Yep, still crank over there cranking it on his <laughs> live stream. So anyway, watch for more <laughs> details on that as we get closer to next week's quorum. My guess is he'll be 100 by then, if I had to guess. Yeah, I, be. I sure hope so. I know what I hope even more. I hope he's like number 999. So he has to really sweat balls. Oh, man. End. Yeah. I just don't just want him to die. I just don't want him to die at 98 or yeah, no dying. I, I want him to make it, but I want it to be a real ball sweater. Yeah. A real ball sweater. Yeah. <laughs> I get those on Christmas time. I buy the fancy yeah, yeah. embroidered ball, ones. Shrinkage. Ball, ball sweater. I made uh, a lot of Seinfeld mm -hmm. references a day. I'm going to have to. Yeah. What's your deal? What's going on with that? Yeah. You just need to watch the show. We watch it all the time. So you just be like yeah. us. Anyway, uh, that's next week. All that Marvel v uh, Street Fighter stuff and Marvel games that happened in the '90s uh, and beyond. There's more. There's there's modern stuff that we'll at least reference. So that's all coming yeah. up. I want to thank some new patrons. We had a whole slew of new people this week. Yes, I really appreciate. We got Troy Press, Steve Manns, Chris B, mm. Craig Watson, and Kelly Snow all joined us at Patreon.com/slash/PlayRetro. Oh, that's Patreon.com/slash/PlayRetro. You'll never get commercials or ads. You'll get pre-show content every week, monthly benefits. Another little bits and bobs here and there. So watch it for that. Helps. All right. It's great. We love having you. That's patreon.com slash play retro. Brian, that's it for us. Uh, if you're looking for all other stuff, you can find it at frogpants.com slash play retro. Just search for the podcast. If you haven't heard it, if you want to watch us live, it's usually Wednesdays at 3.30 Mountain Time here at frogpants.tv. Mm -hmm. yeah. On the YouTubes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We did this week weird because we had stuff. Things come up. 
but uh we're happy to be yeah, here anyway. yeah that was yeah that was on me and then on top of that grandma-in-law fell her mother-in-law she fell this morning so Jeez. we're dealing yeah that's a lot, a lot man that's freaking that's a, a lot. lot it's too much it's too, too much. much too much for one man to bear all right that's gonna do it for us thank you all for listening and we'll see you next week on another episode of play retro Octung! Octung, baby If you like what you just heard, there's a very good chance you will like all the shows on the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Too mm. ah, 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 ah. There you go. <laughs> Wait.